afternoon. This is Pastor Walter Martinez of Redeemed Christian Fellowship. Hello, everybody. And hello, all of you on live stream. <laughs> you guys, say hello so that people know you're here. Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> it's been a very quiet day today. Uh, God is good. Uh, let's start off with some prayer. Father God, we just want to thank you. We just give you glory and praise and honor. We thank you for the Holy Ghost and the ministry of the Holy Ghost. It reveals your word to us. It opens up our hearts and causes us to understand, causes us to uh, comprehend your word, Father God. We just give you all the praise and all the glory, Father God, uh, for your precious living word and for the ministry of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we talk, We started talking about or ministering on the subject of the call. And so uh, uh, let's just go back to that concept again. And, and uh, first of all, we want to understand that everybody is called to salvation that's born again. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, there's a lot of people called to salvation and some accept Jesus and some don't. So, uh, but if you're called and you're saved, or if you're saved, then you've answered the call to salvation, I guess is the best way to say it. But with that, sometimes, or, and if not immediately, then sometime after, uh, there's a call to service, to ministry. Um, and so that's what we want to talk about, the parallel between the two. And then just kind of get into the, the concept of being called to ministry and uh, how you arrive at that position and what it takes to get there. Um, <coughs> Um, we have to understand that those that are called to salvation uh, may not have any uh, ministerial call. When I say ministerial call, I'm talking about uh, what is known as the fivefold ministry. Uh, everyone that is called and in, in, in enters into salvation has a uh, calling to serve in the local church. No one is exempt from that. So. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and it's just the principle of the body of Christ working together. Um, uh, so let's go. To, let, let's go to Ephesians chapter four, verses verse eleven, and uh, and let's just look at some of the the ministry gifts. We'll call them the ministry gifts, um, <coughs> or being called into ministry. Ephesians chapter four, verse eleven says. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Um, and then again, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 28 and 30, it says, And God has set some in the church. Now notice that, <clears throat> notice that in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, it says, And he gave some. And in, Ephesians, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 28 through 30 says, and God sets some uh, in the church. And, it's, and the list starts off pretty much the same. Apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, and this is where it begins to change. <clears throat> After that, um, miracles, gifts of healings, helps, governments, uh, diversity of tongues. These are all ministries within the church. Notice that there's a ministry of helps. Now, this this uh, uh, this is one that uh, isn't really talked about too much. I think it's understood, or at least it was understood in in, in former times, I guess. Uh, but ministry of helps, like it's called the ministry of helps because it helps. <clears throat> the idea is of this ministry is it ranges from anything from being an assistant pastor to being a usher. It's ministry of helps. So because of that, you're going to find different degrees of conviction within each, each degree of the call. So if you're just called to, uh, to be an usher, uh, you may not find that conviction to serve as much as you would if you were an assistant pastor or if you were called to help to stand next to the pastor in some degree uh, more than just say uh, usher would be, or uh, uh, or you know a, a different type of ministry, because there's several, and we'll go through some of those as as we go on. Um, but uh, uh, these, all these gifts that, or ministry gifts that we spoke of, um, <clears throat> they're not they're not all 
going to function out of the, the local church. Every ministry should have a local church. But for instance, the apostle, uh, his calling is to establish works. So it's more, he's more apt to go outside of the church and start works, even churches or, or different types of works. He's an apostle. Uh, and then let's just say the evangelist. He's more apt to go outside of the church uh, and hold crusades and bring people into the church. Um, so uh, a teacher, too, can, can also have a traveling ministry. Uh, but at the same time, uh, he can also teach in a classroom at the church. So but each one of these gifts will have different degrees uh, of, uh, of conviction in them uh, to, to want to serve. Uh, for instance, uh, the apostle may have that strong conviction to get outside of the church and establish a work where the teacher that teaches in, within the local church or where teaches in, within a classroom, all he wants to do is teach in the classroom. That's where his heart is, right? Uh, but nonetheless, they're all called to serve to whatever degree. Uh, which one is the best one? The best one is the one that is doing what God told him to do. So there's no way of, of uh, saying, I have the best ministry, I have a better ministry. The flesh does that. But it's not like that with God. With God, everything is important uh, and, and is equally rewarded as long as you're doing what God called you to do. Um, so uh, these are, are those that are, uh, uh, that they minister uh, in the mainstream of the congregation. Uh, most of these are anyways. Um, let me say this to uh, all these ministry gifts uh, it's important that they are, uh, uh, when they come out of your church, when, when apostles come out, when teachers come out, when evangelists come out of your church, it, or, or an association that you're uh, associated with, it's important that you do your best to support these ministries. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because they, they have to have a livelihood. And that livelihood is found within the local church. Uh, uh, unless, of course, you sponsor them overseas or whatever, uh, which, is, which is doable. But usually that's going to be the ones that have been very committed to the church that sent them out. So what is an apostle? An apostle is one that is sent out. That's the idea. They're sent out to establish works in other places, cities, countries, uh, neighborhoods or whatever it may be. Um, and they are usually supported by their, their local church um, when it's done correctly. Um, God is so good. Um, anyways, uh, without getting too deep into each one of these ministry gifts, uh, let me go on. Um, uh, because uh, there are those that are called to salvation, uh, they are called to some level of service in the local church, but they won't, again, they're not going to have uh, a strongest conviction as maybe is the pastor. Uh, the pastor has to be very careful because with the pastor, it's, it's the local church. And if you're not serving in the local church, uh, you're messing up. Uh, 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 the evangelist will say, if you're, not, if you're not reaching outside of the walls of your church and bringing people in, then you're messing up. <laughs> uh, so each ministry has their areas of, their degrees of, of, uh, of conviction that you have to be very careful that you don't get off in those convictions. Uh, uh, the apostle would say, if they start to get off, they would say, you know, we have to establish other churches. If you're not establishing other churches, you're not fulfilling the will of God. Uh, so these are the extremes of some of these ministries. Uh, uh, I think I like what Kenneth Hagin said one time he said that it would be good for every ministry gift to have to pastor for a while and it would be good for every pastor to have to do another ministry outside of pastoring for a while so that they might be able to understand uh, the depth of those ministries and the convictions that drive those ministries so that uh, it would be easier for people when you have that understanding of what drives 
an apostle, what drives a teacher, what drives uh, a pastor. Uh, so if, if, you, if you stop and look at these individual ministries, you'll see that their area of service is the most important thing to them. And so uh, if you're doing exactly what they're interested in, then you're, you're doing good. I'll say this, every area of ministry is profitable and necessary and good, amen. Um, and they all, have, they all have their part to play within the local church. We'll see that in a little bit. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus, glory be to God. Um, let's talk about the ministry of helps a little bit. The Ministry of Helps is a very interesting ministry uh, because they, they are the ones within the local church that fill the gaps. They're the ones that, that, that do the cleaning. They're the ones that uh, run all the affairs of the church. Uh, they are the ones that uh, uh, do the sound, play in the praise and worship team, they're all classified as Ministry of Helps. The Ministry of Helps is designed to help the pastor stay on track. So what, what, does, what is the pastor supposed to be doing? Uh, very good. Studying and praying. Amen. Uh, let, let me give you an example of that very quickly. And I, um, so let's go, let's go over to Acts chapter 6, if you wouldn't mind, please. Uh, this is something I was thinking about earlier, um, and I didn't know, if, I didn't think I was going to use it today, but as long as we're going down this line, let's go ahead and use it. Um, let's start in, um, uh, let's start in verse, two, uh, Acts chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples uh, unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among, your, among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over these things. But we will give ourselves continuously to prayer and to the ministry of the word. God is so good, isn't he? Uh, so, uh, notice how the apostles realized that if they were going to continue doing what God called them to do, they had to stay in the Word and they had to stay in prayer. So they said to the disciples, you look for people among you full of the wisdom and full of the Holy Ghost. That's, that's a pretty high standard, isn't it? Or at, le at least it may seem like it today. But... Uh, you know, people within the local church, they're, they're supposed to be, some of those, they're supposed to be full of the Holy Ghost and full of wisdom because of the Word being preached. And they're supposed to be taking over the task, the, the everyday task of running a ministry. In this case, it was serving tables. And the apostles understood, we, shouldn't, we don't have time to serve tables and minister the Word of God to you correctly. Uh, now, I understand that being a pastor especially being a pastor that loves to study. It can be time-consuming. And then when you add prayer to it, it can really be time-consuming. Uh, so there's times where I just have to uh, uh, realize that uh, uh, I have to slow myself down. Because my, my biggest weakness is waking up in the middle of the night and starting studying. I just pop, like this morning I was up at 4 o'clock, drank a cup of coffee, and just started studying. Uh, but that can be time-consuming. It can wear you out after a while. Now, when you're under the anointing, you're fine. But when you're through studying, and you wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, you're tired. <laughs> Once that anointing lifts, right? Uh, anyways, God is good, isn't He? Uh, so the Ministry of Helps is vital to the local church. Everyone in the local church should be involved to some degree with the Ministry of Helps. In other words, everyone's called to serve within the local church. No one is exempt. Uh, and there's no exceptions. Biblically. 
there's exceptions. But that's not because that's what God wants. That's because what people are willing to give. Right? God is so good. Uh, I, don't, I don't expect to win a lot of... Uh, uh, well, let me rephrase that. Uh, this is not a feel-good message. This is a... This is a uh, no your responsibilities message. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a message of growth and development because we've got to get the church, not just every, I'm, I'm talking about the church universal, needs to, make, uh, needs to make an effort to rebalance itself so it can begin to function like a local church should function. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because there's so much things out there that are not related to God within, within some of these things some of the churches that, that uh, we're hearing of today, especially some of these bigger churches, uh, which I really don't want to get into, but we all understand that, that things need to get better. Amen? Um, uh, hallelujah. Uh, we have to understand that within the Ministry of Helps, we do have stronger uh, convictions and... and, and uh, uh, some convictions will be stronger than others when it comes to serving God. Amen. You're the only one as an individual that knows what God want, is intended for you to do. Amen. Uh, now, of course, your pastor may know, but there's nothing he can do to get you to do what you're supposed to be doing. That has to come from your individual heart. Amen. Amen. <laughs> sure gets quiet around here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, in other words, I can't go out and say, you're supposed to be doing this. You're supposed to be serving God more. I can't believe you're, you're, you're slacking. I, I, I can't do that. Are you all, do you all understand why I can't do that? Uh, I, that's something that the Holy Ghost has to be able to communicate to you. And you have to know in your heart, there's more I could be doing. I need to step it up. I need not to. But see... These convictions that we have, they're like roller coasters. They go up and down, up and down, up and down, depending upon the things we choose to, to embrace in our lives. So the thing is, is do we put the call on the back burner? Do we serve God? Do we know what the will of God is for our life? How important is that to us? Can the will of God or the call of God until a we have more of a better opportunity? Well, you have to answer that for yourself. All I can do is tell you that you're called to some degree of ministry. Amen. And then kind of show you from the scriptures uh, how it's supposed to look and how a church is supposed to be functioning. Uh, that's all I can do. Uh, Everyone, well, let me put it to you this way. Not everyone is going to be called to a ministry gift, you know, like the pastors and things like that. Uh, uh, but if you are, then call then is more important to you than just someone that's called to uh, greet people at the door. Because it's a ministry gift. And a ministry gift, if you want to step into a ministry, it takes work. And it's not easy. It takes everything. Just being honest with you. Amen? Uh, how you work that out, I don't know. Uh, it, most of you know have known me for quite some time, and you've seen how it's worked out in my life. Uh, and how the steps I had to take, the things that I had to go through to answer the call. Uh, I, as I read through the scriptures, I don't see it being uh, any, I mean, I think, I, I think I've had it easy compared to, you know, uh, the apostles did or other ministry gifts within the Bible. Uh, but it's still been... Uh, uh, difficult on the flesh. Amen. Because the call is always going to be difficult on the flesh. 
because there's things that we want to do and then there's things that God wants us to do and let's just be honest uh, which which one wins out you know uh, again uh, that's something that only the individual person can can determine there's something we have we do have a conscience you know and our conscience we can't uh, we we can't continue to put it put our conscience off to just to do what we want to do and to, and to uh, you know because people will say well Lord you know I have all these responsibilities I believe the Lord knows that you have responsibilities and so I don't know why He called you if He didn't want you to serve if He knew you had all these responsibilities that couldn't serve but if there's a call and you know that you're called and you'll know it in your heart then God must know <laughs> your responsibilities. <laughs> Amen? And so that's something you have to work out with Him. Uh, God is good, isn't He? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. There's so much here. Uh, let's, let's, uh, um, let me jump ahead a little bit. Uh, let's talk about Let's talk about, can we turn our Bibles to Romans, uh, Romans chapter uh, 12, verses 3 through 11. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, keep, along, keep along this line of ministry of helps real quick. Um, it says, in verse 3 it says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, now you heard me say this before when the Apostle Paul uses that term, he's talking about the office of an apostle. Uh, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So, you're not supposed to think of yourself more highly because maybe you have a more uh, uh, glorified uh, ministry. Like for instance, uh, a pastor's ministry can sometimes be glorified. In people's eyes. So can an apostle's ministry. All these ministries can be glorified to some extent in the, in the congregation's eyes. So whatever it is you're called to, don't think of yourself more highly. You're just a man with the call of God on your life or a woman with the call of God on your life. Uh, 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 and you've been dealt a measure of faith to serve within that calling. So you have the right amount of faith to do what God called you to do. It's there, amen? Because uh, he says, he t according as God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. And he says, in verse 4 says, for as we have many members in, w in one body, and all members have not the same office, or not have, they don't have the same position, they don't have the same call, they don't have the same ministry, according, uh, uh, they don't have the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, uh, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. God gives you a portion of faith or a measure of faith so that you can function in the office that he's given you within the local church. Now, we're just talking about the ministry of helps here, but there is people that prophesy, you know, uh, edification, exhortation, and comfort. There are people that God calls to prophesy within the local church that are recognized by the leadership. These are people that will prophesy within the local church. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I'm talking about edification, exhortation, and comfort. Amen. Uh, so there's people that God will, will raise up within the local church. It will become a ministry to them within the local church. Not in the parking lot, but within the local church. Amen? Not in private, but within the local church. A vocal gift that the church can benefit from and be edified with as a whole. Amen? I, I, know, I know I don't have to say that here, but someone might be hearing me and I'm not giving people license to misuse the gifts of the Spirit uh, and to hurt 
and to make it hard on pastors to, to pastor or any other kind of leadership. Um, God is so good. Um, uh, and then it goes on to say, or ministry, wait on, uh, let us wait on our ministries, uh, or uh, he that teaches on teaching. So when it says, let us wait on our ministries, it's talking about, let us wait for the opportune time to do our ministries, to do our service. So whether you're in a classroom, or like say you're teaching the children, or say you're teaching adults in a classroom, or whatever it may be, wait on that opportunity. Amen? Whether it's teaching, um, whether it's exhortation, exhortation is building people up. Um, he, that, uh, he that giveth, there's even people that are called to be generous and to give. Amen? Uh, that's, that's a powerful, that's powerful, isn't it? Because that means God's going to, as long as you're giving, God is supplying. You stop giving, God stops supplying. That is just so easy to understand, but a lot of people don't. Uh, but can you remember that? As long as you're giving, God is supplying. As long as, once you stop giving, God stops supplying. I've seen many people call them to be givers and they stop supplying and all of a sudden the well ran dry mm -hmm. you know and then uh, of course they're they're shocked by it but but you know did I tell you all I can do is point out to you how things work and I can't do it for you and I'm not going to follow you home and I'm not going to call you and say you're not doing like you're supposed to be doing I'm just not going to do that I'm not God I'm just the pastor um, I, I, I serve kind of like a compass. I point the direction. It's up to you to follow that direction or to head in that right direction. That's what pastors do. Uh, anyways, uh, it, it goes on and on and on. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, because I only got a couple more minutes, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, being separated into ministry. This is so important. Let's look at... Uh, Romans chapter one verse one. It says, it says, uh, it says, uh, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, apostle separated unto the gospel of God. Notice that the scripture. Uh, notice that in the scripture, Paul says that he was called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Or you could, uh, it could have been, it could have been at least 17 years based on the accounts uh, found in, in the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 18 and Galatians chapter 2 verse 1 before he ended up in Antioch. And Antioch was where he was separated unto his apostleship. I'll read Galatians chapter 1, verse 18 for you. And after, after three years, I went up uh, to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Galatians 2, uh, 1. And 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took uh, Titus with me also. Acts chapter 13, verse 13. 17 years later. Now, there uh, were at the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, and it lists all these people, including, the, including uh, uh, Saul, which was the Apostle Paul, uh, uh, and, in, uh, and then it goes on to say um, in verse 2, it says, And as they ministered to the Lord, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. Notice how they were separated. The elders of the church laid hands on them and sent them away, because the Holy Ghost said. So notice the confirmation that is coming from the leadership of the church that brought them to this place of separation. He was called, and then later he was separated. With every call, 
there is a separation. In between the call and the separation is a time of preparation. See, when you're serving in the local church, this is when God prepares you on how to deal with people, how to minister to people, how to help people. I've seen so many people that were called but weren't ready yet, and they made a mess of things. When they got out there trying to, because they were anointed to teach, and they thought, well, hey, I want to teach what I want to teach. I just don't want to be submitted here. So I'm just going to do what I got to want to do. And so off they go, starting their church. And before long, a year or two, whatever, then they run into problems and they, can't, and they start hurting people instead of helping people. Well, when you're in the local church serving under a pastor, you're watching him very closely. How does he deal with people's problems? How does he help people heal? Because there's a lot of hurting people out there. How does, how does he do it? Let that anointing get on you. Amen. Until the leadership or the elders of the church recognize that there's a calling on your life and that you've gone through the time of preparation and you know how to deal with people. You can help them and not hurt them. Amen. A pastor doesn't run around pointing out everybody's faults. It almost seems like he ignores them. It doesn't mean he does not aware of it. It just means he loves the people so much that he wants to raise them up in the Lord and wants to see them get to where they're going. And it's a difficult thing for a pastor to have to go through. Unless you are properly trained through and allow the Holy Ghost to train you through serving in the local church, uh, you'll, you'll have trouble if you try to step out ahead of time. I remember when, uh, when I was uh, uh, serving uh, in, in our church, in, in my church, uh, uh, I remember serving my pastor, and I remember being sent to, uh, to South Phoenix to, to do a food bank. You know, I learned so much in those seven years of serving God uh, uh, on, on how to deal with people, how to help with people. It, I didn't know it at the time. I didn't realize it at the time. I, all I wanted to do was teach. I didn't want a pastor until God one day on my way to, to the food bank uh, surprised me and said, if you want to, you know, if you want to pass, if you're going to pastor, you're going to have to start a church. And that was the first I heard of it from him. He surprised me. But what, that experience I got when I actually started the church made all the difference. Made all the difference. I can't begin to tell you what a blessing that time was that to me was seemed to be the most miserable time of my life at the time because all I wanted to do was teach, preach, and travel. I didn't want to deal with people because it was too hard. <laughs> but because I was serving in that capacity under my pastor, I learned and the Holy Ghost taught me under my pastor on how to best help people. And it's helped me even today. God is so good, isn't he? So there's that time of preparation. Know where that time of preparation needs to be spent and what you need to be doing. If you're, if you're not engaged with the people and helping them and truly loving on them and not just tolerating them, are you all here? Because if you can do that, then you're, you're, you're preparing yourself correctly. You're allowing the Holy Ghost to teach you. This is where you prepare. There is a time limit between you, the time you are called to ministry and the time you're actually separated into what you are called to do. Amen? And once again, because, it's, because you're training and you're dealing with people, it's extremely difficult because people can be really unkind. You can pour your life into them and they act like you don't even exist. Are you all here? Mm -hmm. But unless you learn to trust the Holy Ghost and to walk with the Spirit of God and to be able to hear His voice and to follow His leadings, the devil will kill you. 
God is so good. Must, you must take advantage of the time of preparation. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? In Acts chapter 14, verse 14, this is the first time. Now remember in Acts chapter 13, verse 13, the Apostle Paul has is, is been separated, him and Barnabas. But in Acts chapter 14, verse 14, it says, uh, which when the Apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, heard of, they rent their clothes and ran among the people crying out. This is the first time that the Apostle Paul was called an apostle. It is also the first time that he's not called Saul anymore. He went from Saul to Paul, from a teacher to an apostle when he was separated uh, to the work that God has called him to do. Uh, hallelujah, glory be to God. Well, I guess I'm out of time. Um, Hopefully we can pick up next week. We'll see what the Lord allows us to do. Uh, but you are called to serve to some capacity. I don't, I don't, I'm not, uh, I, you know, when I teach this way, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that everybody's called to ministry. That's not true. Amen. Uh, but no matter what you're called to do, uh, you're called to help the church advance. You're called to, to, to do the things that the pastor don't have time to do. You're called to invite people to church. You're called to do all these things that the pastor doesn't have time to do. He's got something to do already. And if he's doing his job right, then you're being fed right. Mm -hmm. And if you're not being fed right, then he's not doing his job right. Amen? Um, no matter... It doesn't mean that a pastor is always perfect and always has the best messages. And I, it's, you're going to like every message that he teaches, you know. Uh, but there's a, there's a, as a pastor, you have to, there's a balance between uh, God loves you, right? God's going to take care of you and do what God asked you to do <laughs> type of messages. There's a balance, amen? Mm -hmm. It's not all just fluff because you'll never grow and develop. Amen? So it's just that balance. And it just takes sometimes a lot of prayer and a lot of study uh, of which the anointing will help you. You're not alone. Amen? God is so good. Anyways, love you all. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for putting up with me today. And uh, may the Lord bless you, keep you, may you be healthy and whole and prosper in everything that you do. Jesus.